friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by at Books and Jams yet again for another book list Thursday. I'm so excited to be joining with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand and Lindsay from Lindsay's Little Library, my dear friends who do book list Thursday every week, and they are letting me bust in on their fun for the first three weeks of December. Today, I'm going to be talking about five star predictions, and it's a follow up. <laughs> so way back on my channel in February of 2018. I did a five star predictions video and I never followed up with those books. Many of you are new since then. I definitely did not have 4,000. Woo woo, I crossed over into 4,000 this week. I did not have 4,000 people watching my channel. So most of you are probably like, what are you even talking about? I never watched a five star predictions video from you. But some of you have been around for the long haul and you, probably never thought about it either, but I'm excited to do a follow-up. The five books that I thought I would give five stars to are The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is book two in the Mistborn trilogy. The Lake House by Kate Morton. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. And two that I don't have, Codename Verity by Elizabeth Vine, which I have gotten rid of, and Unbroken by Lauren Laura Hillenbrand, which is at the bottom of my book tree <laughs> that I built in the other room. So I only have three of them here to show you, but let's talk about if any of these were five stars. I read all five of these books. 10, that's 10. I read all, I read all five of these books actually in 2018. So I'm not sure why it took me until now to do a follow-up, but I like doing five star predictions and it's something that I would like to carry into the new year. So I think it's important to wrap up the last one before I make a new one. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is Codename Verity. I don't own it anymore. That probably gives you a clue as to what I thought about it. I did read this in May of 2018 and I only gave it three stars. Here's what I said on Goodreads. I'm going to read it because it was super helpful because it was a long time ago that I read this book and I couldn't remember what I thought, except that I knew I didn't love it as much as everybody else seemed to love it. It is a World War II historical fiction in which we follow two female pilots, I believe. At least one of them is a pilot. I'm not, I don't remember now if both of them were, but here's what I said in my Goodreads review. If the whole book was like the last 100 pages, it would have been a five star. But the start was so slow and unengaging that I just had to knock off a star. I loved how it all unraveled by the end and the surprises were unexpected and heartbreaking. I did suspect one of the big twists, but the reveal didn't detract from my enjoyment of the book as a whole. I loved the fact that this book is about two young female friends during World War II who have important roles and a close friendship. I wish there was more development of their friendship instead of just us having to accept the few scenes as proof that they're so close. I took away another star for that reason. So I do remember that. Um, I do remember that I predicted one of the big twists. I do remember that I didn't get enough information about why these two were so close. It just said over and over how close they were but there wasn't a lot of proof <laughs> that showed me that they were such good friends. So yeah, I only gave that one three stars. I'm not, I did not keep it on my shelves. I actually just recently got rid of it. And I don't think I'm going to read any more Elizabeth Vine. She writes YA mainly, and I just have gotten rid of the rest of her books as well. So that one was a no-go. Not a no-go. Three stars is decent. It just definitely wasn't a five star. The next one, though, is The Well of Ascension. And this is book two in a trilogy. And sometimes book two in trilogies are known for not being very good or like the second book slump or sometimes just having to propel the stories forward and not really having enough depth on its own. However, I did give this book a whopping five stars. Woohoo! <laughs> I loved the continuation of Vin's story. Um, I loved the continuation of this world and what happened. I loved the depth of some of the side characters from the first book and how we got to know them a little bit more in here. The twists at the end, there was a couple things that happened that I was unprepared for that totally took me by surprise. I remember reading a good chunk of this um, while I was traveling um, on my missions trip last year in 2019. Nope, 2018. I read this in the fall of, I think I put marked it as October 5th, 2018. So I did read a lot of it while I was gone in September. Um, so it took me 
a little longer to read. I didn't fly through it, but I don't remember ever not being invested and interested in the story. And I definitely ended up giving it five stars. It was a win. And I don't know why I haven't yet finished the trilogy. I still have Hero of Ages on my shelf to finish. But yes, this was definitely a five star. Um, I've only read two Brandon Sanderson, but so far I've loved both of them. The next one I'll talk about is The Lake House by Kate Morton. I read this in July of 2018 and this was almost a five star for me. I just gave it four stars and I don't have a good review. I don't have much. I don't have anything written about it on Goodreads. All I have is that I marked it four stars. But I do remember thinking that there was just a couple parts that were a little bit slow. And honestly, as much as I love Kate Morton, I've read three of her books right now. I found that to be true. No, I've read four of her books. I loved Forgotten Garden, which I read a long time ago. I really loved The Secret Keeper, and I really liked this one. I didn't love The Clockmaker's Daughter. That was just a three star, I think, for me. This was a four star, and the other two I believe I gave five stars. However, all of them have a few pacing issues for me. There's just, a, maybe just because they're so long, that there are a couple parts that just make me feel like, can we already get to the, can we move things along a little bit faster, please? So yeah, I really love Kate Morton, um, but there are, I have to go into it prepared to take a little bit longer because I'm not going to fly through it. It's not going to completely be a page turner, even though I get very invested in the story. This one is a bit of a family drama and a mystery. This family lives in a country house in Cornwall and one night while they're having this big annual party, their 11 month old son goes missing. Um, and then we also have a dual tomb line, time, a dual tomb line. We also have another timeline 70 years later, and of course there are connections between the two timelines. It's very good, uh, very well written, beautifully written, and I definitely recommend reading this book and Kate Morton if you haven't already. But this one was just four stars, not quite a five star. So, so far one was right and two were not. Two more to go. <laughs> the next one... Let's talk about Unbroken, which I don't have with me because it's holding up my tree in the other room. Unbroken, I read for my Goodreads read-along group in October of 2018. And Unbroken received five stars from me. I absolutely loved it. It's the story of Louis Zamperini, and it's a nonfiction uh, biography, not a memoir, excuse me, it's a biography. Louis Zamperini was an Olympic runner. And we kind of follow him from his middle childhood years through college till he, uh, or high school, I don't remember how old he was, when he gets drafted or joins the Air Force in World War II. Uh, he, works on a, he works on a bomber plane, bomber, these big old bomber planes that we learn quite a lot about during the book, but uh, his plane gets shot down over the Pacific Ocean. And he is with two of his other comrades are, or his other soldiers, two of, two of his other um, soldiers are on an inflatable raft in the Pacific Ocean for like a ridiculous amount of time. I want to say 70 days or something along those lines. Way too long to fight starvation, um, dehydration, not having any food or water, um, sharks. And other and other weather issues just like I can't believe that they um, that he survived all of that only to get picked up by Japanese and sent to like basically just Japanese concentration camps or death camps um, and all of that he had all of the things that he had to survive that he survived that he, not that he had to all of the things that he survived in those camps and the the people that he came in contact with and then when he came home his process of healing and restoration into life in general and and physical healing spiritual healing mental healing and how his faith was affected and um how he moved forward beyond all of this like it was such a good story such a good story i would highly recommend it especially if you have a trouble like i do sometimes reading nonfiction. Unbroken was very readable, very interesting, and just um, heart-wrenching at times, and uh, just fantastic. Fantastic! I gave it, obviously, five stars. <laughs> and the last one I have to talk about today that I 
predicted would be five star read was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. I did read this one with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. I think this was our first buddy read now that I think about it. And we read this in, let me see, where did I mark this? October. Did I honestly read these all in October? I don't know. But I marked it down here as October. And I gave this one four stars. So almost five stars. I don't remember now why. Maybe just because it was so strange. But in this one, we followed this ship, a spaceship, filled with many different beings, creatures. Um, oh, I remember something about this. Hold on. <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, in this, we, yeah, we follow all of these, these, this crew of aliens and humans and different, um, I want to say nationalities, but different types of creatures. And it does deal with like stereotypes and racism and accepting others for who they are. And it gets a little heavy handed on the issues that Becky Chambers wanted to talk about. I think it was not very subtle. And I think that's why I knocked it down a star. I thought the story was fine. It didn't have loads of action. So what this ship, their job is to travel to another place and then punch a hole, like a shortcut back so that others going to that place can get there quicker. So yeah, so they have a long way out to this planet, which is potentially going to be attacked by these other beings. So we have this whole space situation going on. And then within that, we have this ship full of creatures and, and we, we learn about their backstories and, and their characteristics and stereotypes of each of these different races or beings. And it was, it was interesting and it was a lot of fun to read with Sarah. I remember really enjoying the buddy read and I really remember enjoying the book itself as well. I just felt like it was a little heavy handed with some of the, the issues. Um, I don't mind a book that deals with issues, but it was very obvious. It wasn't done very subtly. I don't know. I just didn't love the way that the Becky Chambers chose to address some of these things. But I did think it was very fun. I thought, yeah, just super creative. Um, I did not love the second book in the series, but that's a, another story for another day. So yeah, I gave this four stars. So out of the five books that I thought would be five stars, I had one three star, two four stars, and two five stars. Not bad. Out of those five books, two of them were five stars and two were four. All of them were decent reads, which is good because I expected them all to be really good reads. <laughs> Um, but I do look forward to starting some new five-star predictions uh, going forward and then doing my follow-ups a lot faster <laughs> than I did these ones. But if you haven't already clicked over to Sarah and Lindsay's channels, they have some five-star prediction follow-ups today as well. Thanks, girls, for letting me join in yet again. Um, I would love to chat with you guys down below about these books. Did you agree with me with any of my ratings on them? I know they're all a little bit older. Um, do you have any books coming up that you are predicting to be five stars? Uh, I can't wait to take a look at some of my books for 2020 and decide which ones are going to be five stars for me. And that's it for today. I love chatting with you down in the comments. Let's talk down there. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will be talking to you in another video tomorrow. Bye.